Good evening, John Savelli here with Weather NJ. It's great to be back, and it's time, unfortunately, to welcome back Winter. Where you been, Winter? We've missed you. We had a great couple years together. We laughed, we cried, we shoveled, we shoveled again. In 2011-2012, La Nina has had her say. La Nina being the opposite of El Nino, and it's a little bit of a warmer pattern for us here in the Middle Atlantic. It's a very transient pattern. We see a lot of air masses that move in, quickly move out. A strong Pacific jet influence, so we see more maritime air make its way across the country. And as a result, we haven't seen snowfall. That's normal. And beyond this weekend, I think we get back into that kind of pattern where we will be snow starved here in New Jersey for the time being. Taking a look at the satellite to my side, you would be hard pressed to figure out where the storm is going to come from. It's going to be affecting us in about 24 hours, and you can't really find it on the satellite. If you look over the Rocky Mountains, you'll see some colder cloud tops starting to spill out over the Great Plains. And that is a weak system beginning to form, which will be a weak system by the time it affects us. And it'll be pretty weak when it's on its way out. That's the reason that we're going to see some snow, though, because of it, as it won't have the strong southerly winds to change things over to rain, as the past couple storms have been able to do. The first thing I want to show is the New Jersey temperature map. These are temperatures as of midnight on Friday morning, generally right around freezing, 32, 32 in Middlesex County, Somerset County, same in Mercer, a little bit warmer the further south you go, Cape May County, up in the upper 30s, actually a reading of 40 in Atlantic City, the usual suspects up north, Sussex County, Morris County, they're a little bit colder as they always are, and the reason that we're not really chilling out and bottoming out and reaching into the teens is because of the dew point, you can see that things generally around 20 degrees, a little bit warmer, same reason that we have relative humidity that's 60%, 70%, 80%. In fact, we actually had enough cloud cover and a little bit of snowfall in South Jersey tonight. Just some snow showers passed through. But it's this cloud cover that's acting as a blanket to really keep us insulated, keep those temperatures up. And that's why when you leave for work tomorrow morning, you'll be de dealing with temperatures around freezing instead of temperatures in the upper teens or low 20s. So count your blessings. Thank that cloud cover. I wanted to show the wind flow at the top of the atmosphere. This is the jet stream level, 250 millibars. A couple features that I wanted to point out to you. If you look to the north of New Jersey over New York State, you'll see a weak jet streak, 120 knots. You'll see a similar jet streak over central Canada, reaching down towards Minnesota, also 120 knots. And the reason I'm pointing this out is that you can see the flow is really contained over Canada and over the US Canadian border bottling up that cold air keeping things confined towards Hudson Bay and towards some of the uh, the the northern plains and the northern Great Lakes region northern New England the cold air masses aren't dipping down into the central part of the country making their way east the way that they do uh, in a classic winter and they the way they have in the past couple of years again this is a result of La Nina this is that kind of typical pattern that you expect to see another typical result of La Nina if you look towards California, you see a jet streak of 140 knots crashing into California, making its way through the Rocky Mountains. That's that strong Pacific jet, strong flow off the ocean, bringing in that maritime air, very moderate air mass, not the kind of air that's going to get really cold at night, not the kind of air that's going to support snowfall. And we've had a lot of that making its way across the country. We'll show a little bit further. Uh, in the future in a moment why I think that we see more of that and this pattern continues for this foreseeable future. Bringing it back down to the surface, 30 hours out, this is valid uh, 1 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. And again, where is our consolidated low pressure? You don't see it. You see a weak wave of low pressure stretching from Kentucky down towards Texas. Winds on the south side of that boundary are from the south throughout Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. On the north side of that boundary, you see winds from the north throughout Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa. And right along this, this frontal boundary is where you see weak low pressure being stretched across. The other thing that you want to see here is that there isn't any strong southerly or easterly winds making its way through the mid-Atlantic onto the coastal plain. That's why we stay cold. That's why the low-level air, the low-level cold stays trapped. And that's why we see more frozen precipitation uh, than wet, I believe. 36 hours out, we're jumping ahead 6 hours, this is valid 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Low pressure finally starting to consolidate over West Virginia and Kentucky, but it's still weak, it's still strung out. The strongest winds well off the coast, they're not making their way towards New Jersey. This is the height of the storm for us here, we're seeing the strongest 
precipitation rates at this point. I think there's still mostly snow. Going a little further into the future, 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, things are winding down for us here in New Jersey. The low pressure is finally consolidated, moved off the coast, still weak. 10, 12 millibars, nothing to write home about. The strongest winds well off the coast to the south and east. We never get into that strong south, southeast or northeast quadrant of the storm. We never see the warming marine influence, and that's why we see more white than wet this go around. Just how much falls? Well, this is the precipitation total from the NAM, the North American model. 0.6 to 0.9 inches of liquid equivalent across New Jersey. The GFS, the other member of the American suite of computer models, a little bit drier, and that's typical. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 inches of liquid equivalent. We'll split the difference and say generally 0.6 to 0.8 inches across the state. How does that fall? Is it snow? Is it rain? I think I got this one figured out. Here's the snowfall total map. 48 inches for basically everywhere from maybe 15 to 20 miles south of 195 and all points north. I do think that the cold air hangs on in the low level, lower levels, keeping things uh, mostly snowfall across the northern half of the state. The southern half of the state might be some warming at the mid-levels, probably see some sleet, maybe a little bit of freezing rain even. Plain rain probably down as you get towards the coast, Atlantic City, Cape May County, Cumberland County, Salem County. These places will probably see a little bit less, be on the low end of that 2 to 4 range. This is a little bit uh, enthusiastic, but I really think that we're going to sneak a snowstorm out of this unfavorable pattern. And let's talk a little bit more about the pattern. This is what I wanted to show as we go out in the future. Again, this is the jet stream at 30 hours out. We'll jump a little further into the future. This is 42 hours out. And here is that just river of warm air making its way from California through the Rocky Mountains and then starting to buck up into the northern plains. As we go a little bit further out, 54 hours now, that river again screaming from the Pacific through the Pacific Northwest and across the whole country inundating the lower 48 with maritime air. Going a full 84 hours out, this is as far as the NAM goes. And you really just see it. That's the Pacific jet making its way from the Pacific Ocean all the way up uh, through the lower Missouri Valley, up the Appalachians, into the British Maritimes, now towards Nova Scotia. This is warm air inundating the country. This is what I expect for, for much of the rest of the winter. And looking out at the extended outlook, this is a uh, the European model and the GFS. And the most significant feature that you see mirrored on both of these models, they agree pretty well, is a strong height anomaly across the Pacific Ocean coupled with a low anomaly over the Aleutian Islands and towards Alaska. And again, what this says is strong winds off the Pacific Oceans. It means warm air for you in the lower 48. It means an air mass that can't support snowfall. And it looks like we deal with more of that for the extended future. So if you're hoping for a respite from the snowfall, we're going to give that back a rest. We just have to get through this weekend, and then it looks like a little bit more of what we've been dealing with for the past couple months. So enjoy it, and as always, warm regards.